We are in a high tunnel today um, in at the University of Kentucky Research Station, and we have a squash and zucchini uh, variety trial here. This particular trial is meant to evaluate cultivars uh, for disease resistance for powdery mildew. So powdery mildew is our primary focus when we grow any cucurbit uh, crops at all. Um, so uh, let me preface by saying that squash and zucchini are not recommended for high tunnels in Kentucky. This is just a trial. But while we're here, we can take a look at some of the powdery mildews that are affecting uh, cucurbits in general. So because our, our sides are up, we're looking at the same types of powdery mildews that we would see in the field. So here in Kentucky, there are three species of uh, powdery mildew fungi that affect cucurbits. One is the Podosphera uh, genus and two are in the Golovinomyces species. So uh, the ones that we have differ by, uh, by farm and by crop. Either way, they all act pretty similarly. So powdery mildew is a summer disease. Um, it can be, some species can be pretty ubiquitous, meaning they can cover a wide range of crops and some are very host specific. Uh, these in particular have a broad host range for powdery mildew sake. So they can affect different types of powdery mil uh, different types of crops, including other, uh, other crops and also weeds. Uh, powdery mildews, um, are known to cause disease in arid conditions. So humidity and, and leaf wetness does not have to be high. As a matter of fact, 50 to 90% humidity is the range that we can have powdery mildew infections. And that's a little bit different than most of our other diseases. So once powdery mildew begins to infect, um, the powdery symptoms or signs that you see here, those are all mycelia and spores. So these spores called canidia can blow around. And that's where powdery mildew becomes the most dangerous for a, uh, for a grower is that once it develops, spread is very rapid and, uh, and disease will move from plant to plant, plant to plant really, really quickly. So a little bit about powdery mildew. Typically, we'll start seeing symptoms when plants begin to flower, so as they enter their reproductive stages. Uh, they will begin as small spots on leaves, and those spots will expand as they go. And eventually, you will have entire leaves covered with powdery mildew. And for cucurbits, plants can die as a result, or leaves can die as a result of this disease. And so in, in past years, we have had complete uh, decimation of uh, cucurbit crops here in the tunnel because powdery mildew was so severe. It just really killed plants out. So in terms of management, cultural practices are very important. So air circulation and to be able to um, to reduce humidity and, and leaf wetness. And you do that by, first of all, avoiding overhead irrigation when at all possible. And here in the tunnel, we can do that. If you're outside, uh, rain would be um, a driving factor in overall humidity. You'll see they have really dense canopy. So internal canopy can be very high. Uh, internal canopy humidity can be very high. And so that will raise that humidity. Another thing I always recommend is to monitor the humidity in the tunnel. Know what that humidity is using fans or opening sidewalls or ends in order to lower that humidity. So another important, another important cultural practice is to space plants so that there is sufficient air circulation between plants. And with air circulation, we're able to reduce humidity and to reduce leaf wetness as much as possible. So we also recommend resistant cultivars um, when planting cucurbits. So there are a lot of cultivars that are recommended. We are in the process of trying those out here in Kentucky. Which of these nine cultivars is most resistant to powdery mildew or tolerant? Uh, we also mix resistance, um, genetic resistance with uh, those cultural practices that I just mentioned or fung and or fungicides. And almost all cases, we need to use some type of fungicide in cucurbit. So fungicide should be applied beginning when temperatures reach about that 70 degree mark and humidity is high. And of course, plants are entering the reproductive phases. And fungicides can vary. There are organic and conventional fungicides available, but it's really important that fungicides are applied per label instructions uh, to protect the crop. And if that doesn't happen, then succession planting would be the only option for growers. And 
that is not an efficient use of, of space or time for growers. So in summary, um, this zucchini and squash trial is um, targeting resistant cultivars. Those will be published at the end of the season with those results, but we are seeing some cultivars that have less powdery mildew and others that have more powdery mildew. So we'll do some rankings soon, but remember that powdery mildew is driven by plant age or maturity and by humidity and temperature and also the spread of powdery mildew is dependent upon wind and breeze which we almost always get so once powdery mildew outbreak occurs it's very hard to control so using fungicides as preventatives is essential okay cut